What's up everybody and welcome back to another video on the SAT from the Scalar Learning Channel. And this one is all about what to do now that you have received your SAT score. So we're gonna run through a number of scenarios in terms of what position you're in now that you've gotten your score back and I'm gonna give you advice accordingly. So the first scenario is that you got your score back and you hit your target score. If that's the case, congratulations. Maybe this is your last time taking it. Maybe you could take it again. So now the question will come to you. Hey, you hit your target score. You're happy. You're thrilled. Is this it? Or do you think you can do even better? If this is it, like I said, you're good. Chillax is all over. But if you truly believe that you can one up this score and you have it in you, this is the important part. You have it in you to prep again and to try and really boost your score. Then I say, go for it. Choose a date. Give yourself ample time. Study the things you got wrong and knock it out. Now we come to the next scenario where you got below your target score. Okay, so let's talk about the two scenarios here. So first of all, let's say this was your last test. Unfortunately, if it was your last test and you didn't hit your target score, you're gonna just have to accept that reality. And I know it sucks and I know it's difficult to accept, but it is what it is. But there is a silver lining. So the silver lining is, if you look at the US News and World Reports in terms of the 25th to 75th percentile scores for the SAT for all these various universities, you may look at it and be like, well, now I'm not in that pocket, so I shouldn't apply. But remember, that's only the middle chunk of scores. There are scores each year that these schools admit that fall both below and above that, right? And that's half is not gonna fall in that range, right? That's only 50% of the students fall within that interquartile range. So it doesn't mean that you should just all of a sudden not apply if you're not within that specific zone. Secondly, there are a lot of criteria that schools use for admissions. Testing is just one of those criteria. It's usually one of the earlier criteria used to help weed out applicants when there's a lot of applicants. But remember, each and every school is trying to build a different type of community that's both diverse and enriching. So while you may not be the right fit at one school, you may be a great fit at another one and they could both have the same type of test requirements. So my point is, is that I wouldn't freak out if you're below that interquartile range for the target SAT score for a particular school you want to apply for. I say still go for it as long as you're somewhere near that zone. Now let's say this wasn't your last attempt and you still have more chances to take the SAT and boost your score. My advice is pretty simple do your best to improve. So what does this mean practically? I'd say take your test, look at the QAS report, see everything you got wrong. This attempt has already given you great perspective on what you'll see on the SAT, how you'll feel, the nerves, the emotions, all that stuff. Now you can carefully look at what tripped you up, what things weren't tricky, and make a plan accordingly. And I would say whatever studying you did, take a look at that. Consider the fact that maybe you didn't put in enough time, maybe you didn't put in enough practice to really hone your skills. Make whatever adjustments you can in the time you have available and go for it. If you haven't seen my video yet on how to schedule your time in terms of SAT prep, you can click the link above and it'll take you right there. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, please click that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this from the Scalar Learning channel, make sure to click subscribe. Thank you guys so much for joining and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.